Hey folks, how you doing? This is price less than demand. We are now going to look at a second equation to use when calculating for the price less than demand. Now we saw in the other video that we have an equation where we have numbers in percent format. But now the question is, what if we do not have, we don't have numbers in percent format? What will happen next? So we know that we have still the same, the quantity on the numerator over the price in the denominator. But notice how this equation no longer has the percent symbol, but what we have kept are the change quantity over change in price. And that delta, once again, represents change new minus old. This equation can then be extended as the following. The change in quantity can now represent the change new minus old by taking Q2 minus Q1. So notice how Q2 is the newer quantity, Q1 is the older quantity. So now we have Q2 over um, Q2 minus Q1 over Q. Q1. And this represents the change in quantity. At the same time, for price, do the same thing. We have the new price minus the old price, parentheses, over the old price. So now we have a new equation we can use when numbers are not in percent format. Notice that we have parentheses which means we have to use and calculate the parentheses first before we actually divide by Q or P. So for example, back to Starbucks. Starbucks increases price from $2.50 to $3. Thus, you consume less coffee from three to one cup. What is the price elasticity of demand? Notice that now we have two sets of numbers, one set represents price, other set represents quantity. And now you see the word from. From means old, to means new. And when we look at both from to, from to, we know exactly which numbers represents the newer number. And since this represents quantity, we then focus on one as Q2, three as Q1. Let's go ahead and input that in our equation of E sub P sub D. Now we have Q2, one, minus Q1, three. Parentheses over Q1, three. As we can see with our equation, it does reflect what we have here. Over we have $3 as the new price and $2.50 as the old price. So 3 minus $2.50, parentheses over $2.50. And now we can solve for price elasticity of demand. So what we get here on the numerator, we're bound to get a negative 2 over 3 over 0.5 over 2.5. Okay, so now we can solve the numerator. We're bound to get a negative 0.67. I'll round off the nearest hundred, so 0.67. And for the bottom one, we're bound to get a 0.2. So notice that we have a negative sign, which tells us once again that we are working with demand, because both price and quantity have an inverse relationship. 
And once we calculate these two numbers, we're bound to get a negative 3.35. And because this is demand, we have to take the absolute value to get a final answer of 3.35. And this number is greater than one, so it is elastic. Again, the larger the number, the more response you have as a consumer. Let's reread what we have here to see what, what makes sense. When Starbucks increases price by 50 cents, your response to not buy Starbucks is fast. So think about that. For Starbucks to charge you an additional 50 cents, you're gonna notice, and you're now gonna want to buy other coffee um, brands, coffee bean, let's say, and not Starbucks. So if you own a Starbucks franchise, you do not want to increase by 50 cents for fear of losing customers. And that is price elasticity of demand.